Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. I hope all of you are doing well and thank you so much for supporting me on my YouTube journey. First and foremost, a lot of you reached out yesterday after my video and asked me that hey Akshat, can you share some of the stocks, specific stocks that you are investing in? So I thought that why not? Let me share three specific quality stocks in which I'm currently investing. I have already made a bit of investments in these stocks, but I would continue to make more investments in these three specific stocks. So I'll explain the reason why. That's one. Second thing, please do not consider this video as an investment advice. This is purely from educational purpose. I'm telling you my strategies, how I'm going to play out in these stocks. Please watch the video till the very end because as the final step, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how am I investing, right? Just not where am I investing, but how am I investing in these stocks and how you should play it out too in case you're taking my advice. But please do your due diligence. With that said, let's get the video started and let me talk about the first stock in which I'm bullish and I'm going to continue to make investments. So the first stock is Tata Steel and I'm very, very bullish about the steel industry right now. Let me explain you why. So if you take a look at the chart for Tata Steel, you will see this peak pattern, right? So this is called as peak pattern, right? Peak pattern. Now, usually whenever there is a kind of this type of a peak, which indicates that there has been a sudden rise in the stock price, I would generally advocate not to invest. I myself have never invested in a stock where there was this type of a peak pattern, right? So this is the first time I'm doing it, but hear me out. Why am I very bullish about this stock? Number one, the steel industry goes through a cycle. Now this is true for almost any commodity, be it gold, be it silver, be it steel, be it bronze, whatever, right? Any commodity goes through a cycle, right? And these cycles last for a long duration. With me till here? That any commodity goes through a cycle and these cycles tend to last for several years, especially the steel cycle. So let me now show you how this steel cycle has played out in the past. So if we take a look at the last five years data, so I'm looking at the last five years data, you will see that in the last from 2017 to approximately 2020 onwards, so we are looking at a window of three, three and a half years, this three and a half years, the steel prices traded sideways. So this was stuck at approximately 4,000 levels and the steel prices were moving sideways. Now, post coronavirus, the steel prices have been going up, right? So this is the part that I'm talking about that the steel prices have been going up post the coronavirus pandemic. Now, this cycle has only lasted so far for how many years? It has lasted for approximately 1.2 years, 1.25 years, right? So there is still good one and a half years left during this upswing of steel prices. Now, as the steel prices go up, the stock prices will also go up. So till what extent do I see the steel prices going up? So we can quickly check the forecast that has been given here. So forecast is a forecast. It's not a guarantee. So please don't comment that he actually was the guarantee of this forecast being right. There is no guarantee, but this is what is believed by doing data simulations and data exercises that in the next five years, if we take a look at the next five years, the forecast says that we are going to hit approximately 6,500 levels. So from 5,500 levels to 6,500 levels, if we move, there is approximately 20% gain to be made. This is the first key point that the steel or commodity prices have a cycle. We are currently going through something called as steel super cycle. I'll explain that in a minute, but we are going through something called as steel super cycle. Now this cycle is likely to last for another one and a half, two years. Now, very important question and you should ask me, right? So please ask me in the comment that he explain why this super cycle will last for another one and a half, two years. So what happens is this, right? That whenever there is GDP contraction, right? Then what happens first? That the world demand goes down. Now, because of coronavirus, there was a massive GDP contraction all across the world. It came to an extent where the national governments, be it US government or European governments, they had to print money and flush it in the economy so as for the demand to pick up, right? So the demand had been low post the 2020 coronavirus. Now, hopefully we are in a phase where the coronavirus hopefully will go away and the demand is picking up. So as the demand goes up, the demand for everything picks up. For example, automobile manufacturing goes up, more roads are constructed, more bridges are built. So what is required for that? So steel is required. And therefore I'm saying that, hey, it has good one and a half years left 
for this cycle to get completed right this is the reason why i had already invested money in tata steel and i will continue to invest more money as we go along one final point to add here is about the point around super cycles so the last super cycle in steel ran from 2004 to 2007 Right? So that was the time when the steel prices went up and this again was a three, three and a half years period. So I am expecting that a similar period will continue post coronavirus. Therefore, I am quite bullish about this industry overall. Now, okay, so that is the industry wide analysis. So let me just quickly do the company analysis and let me talk a little bit about Tata. I had made a separate case study on the Tata group. I'll link it here. Please watch it. That will help you understand how the conglomerate is approaching its business. So the way Tata Steel is approaching is that they are consolidating everything, consolidating things, right? Consolidation means that they are going to mix business lines. They are going to extract synergies out of it. They are streamlining their management. Their management in the past has been good and there is no reason why they would not do well with this Tata Steel Limited company as well. Now let us just quickly do some fundamental analysis, especially around finance and valuations and see whether it makes sense to invest in this stock or should we pick some other stocks. So at this stage, if you pick some other steel stocks, it's also okay. But I'm quite bullish about three steel stocks. So I'll mention that. So one is JSW Steel. One is SAIL Sale. Even Mr. Rakesh Anjanwala had made massive investments in sale. And third is Tata Steel. So let us look at some financials and do a very quick analysis that are there any major red flags here. So in terms of revenues, the revenues seem to be growing right every year. So this seems to be a good news that the revenues have grown. The intrinsic value seems to be fine, uh, no red flags. This is probably entry point as per ticker tape seems to be wrong. But sometimes you need to consider the entire industry overview, right? They might be picking up that peak thing that I was talking about when I initially showed you the chart of Tata Steel. So of course, no doubt, whenever such a peak is created, investors should be a little bit scared in terms of entering it. But if the industry prospects look really bright, then you should take a chance. That is what I am also doing. Now, great part is that this has very little default probability. Now, for a capital intensive business like steel, if the default probability is low, that's a very good sign, right? So please keep that in mind. Now, if we compare the financial ratios here, then it seems okay to me, the PE ratio of the stocks is somewhat comparable to its competitors. Sale, I am an investor in this, as I have already said that I'm going to invest in this company. So all these three stocks look okay to me. I don't see any fundamental problems. And as the industry grow, all these stocks will grow with it. Just because of the fact all these three companies are major steel players and there is no reason to be scared. If the steel industry itself grows, these stocks will 100% grow from there. The only thing that we need to keep in mind is that these companies should not have massive debt. As long as that is not there and they are able to repay their debt, they will be okay. With rising steel price, their business will pick up and they will create massive impact. Now, the second stock that I'm going to speak about is HDFC AMC. Now, I feel that asset management company, now asset management company, what do they do? They essentially, whenever you do your SIP, so you're giving money to whom? You're giving it to an organization like HDFC, Nippon India Management. These are all asset management company. They run different mutual funds. They run different portfolio management services. So you give money to these big organizations and then they put your money into the stock markets, right? That is what asset management company is. Now, two very quick points here. One is that the stock market in India is not mature, right? Compared to the stock market in developed countries. So there is a lot of people who are still away from the stock market in India. So this is something that is changing already that more and more people are entering into the stock market as more and more people enter into the stock market. Companies like HDFC, Nippon Asset Management, Nam India, it is called as Nippon Asset Management, Nam India. So these companies will grow with it because they will get more AUM, which is asset under management as their AUM grow it becomes highly profitable. I will show you when I do the fundamental analysis why I am saying that these are highly profitable ventures. But the industry overview is that as more and more people enter into the stock market, the business of these companies like HDFC, AMC, NAM India, it will keep on going up. That's one. Now, very quickly about the technicals. Now, if you do a 200 DMA, right? I taught this strategy earlier. Please comment below that if you understand what 200 DMA means, okay? 
tell me the full form of DMA. This is a small test for you, right? So this is the 200 DMA. This is the green line, 200 DMA. How do you put it up? So if you go on Zerudha and if you put your studies here, you will get the tab to put the 200 DMA. Now you will see that the stock is trading close to its 200 DMA. Now this is a great time to buy the stock, right? Therefore, I'm quite bullish. I'm already heavily invested. I'll invest even more money in HDFC AMC because the industry is solid and the stock is solid as well. Now, before I analyze the fundamentals of HDFC AMC, one final point that I want to make on the industry. Now, this was a very interesting article that was there on Economic Times. So it goes something like this, that India has witnessed tremendous growth in its mutual fund industry that has grown from 1.13 lakh crore to 31.7 lakh crore in AUM from March 2000 to February 2021, right? So in 21 years, it has literally increased by 31 times, which is massive. So this industry is one of the highest growth industries in India. So please keep this in mind. Now, this is the reason why I'm very bullish on HDFC, AMC and NAM India. Okay, now let's just quickly move on to the fundamentals of the stock and let us look at the financials. Let us see if there are any interesting things that are happening, right? So let us look at how strong the financials are. So now if you take a look at the total revenues, are they going up or down? They are going up. If you look at the net income, is it going up or down? It is going up, right? And it has been going massively up, right? In literally like four years, it has 2x its profit, approximately 2x its profit. This is massive, right? So the company is growing at a massive, massive rate. Now, one concept that I've taught you, and again, this is a test that if the stock has made its highest ever profit and it is not trading at its highest ever price. So this is not the highest ever price. This is the highest ever price in the last five years. If that scenario plays out, you should go and buy the stock. Who said this? I've taught this multiple times. So type out your answers. Now, if you take a look at some of the key ratios for HDFC AMC, you will figure out that the ROC, return on capital employed is close to 40%. That if you're giving HDFC 100 rupees, it, it churns out a profit of 40 rupees on it, which is massive, right? So it has one of the highest ROCs. And this tells us that this company knows how to use the capital very effectively. Now, the interesting part is that in asset management industry, whether it's Nippon Asset Management or whether it's HDFC AMC, this is not a fixed cost business. What this means is that your fixed costs are limited. For example, let's assume that the asset under management for HDFC AMC right now is, let's say, 1000 crores. Now, if it grows to 2000 crores, are they going to double their workforce? The answer is no, because it would hardly take any additional effort to manage this 2000 crore portfolio. So as more and more people enter into the stock market in India, as the stock markets in India become more and more mature, this profitability or that ROCE that I was talking about, it keeps on going up and it becomes a massively profitable company. So that is the reason why I'm quite bullish on HDFC AMC. I plan on holding this stock for a long, long time. This is the second key stock that I'm bullish about. Again, this is not an investment advice. These are my personal views. Now, the third stock that I would recommend is ITC. I had made a separate video here. So please watch the detailed fundamental analysis of ITC. But this is the third stock in which I'm investing. Now, very quickly, why? Because number one, the the stock is trading at around 200 days moving average. It's a good time to buy this stock. Second, if we take a look at the financials of the company, the total revenues have been growing. Net cash flows have been increasing. The net income has been on the rise. It has been a consistent cash flow giving company. It gives very high dividends, right? So I'm taking it as almost a risk free stock rather than putting my money in an FD. I would put it in ITC. Now you might say, and someone commented the last time that he actually that is very risky that you're investing in ITC. It's a stock. Why don't you invest in FD? Because two reasons. One is that the stock itself can grow, right? So this is just the dividend. When How do you make money in the stock? One is that the stock itself grows that instead of 206, it might become 210, right? Second is that ITC will give dividends. Six to seven percent dividend it usually gives. So this is two ways in which I'm going to make money. Now, the point is that for ITC, the cigarette business is very, very stable, right? Almost all the commentary that you will read about ITC is that, hey, it's not profitable in its FMCG. Please watch the video. I have explained all the points there. But very quick point is that its cigarette business is very stable. It's not going anywhere. It will continue to give cash flows. Therefore, ITC will keep on giving dividends. No problem there. And over time, ITC's FMCG business will also grow. That will act as a growth engine. So that is what will propel this stock further. I am completely okay that if the stock price does not move beyond 220 in one year, because anyways, I'm getting a dividend of 6-7%. 
Final point about ITC is that this is a defensive stock. Now my portfolio is mostly aggressive. So if I'm adding some defensive stocks onto it, something like ITC, I'm completely okay doing it because at the end of the year, this has the potential of giving me at least 7 to 10% return. Very, very easy. Easily 10% return. Why? Because 7% from here and at least 3% from here. So therefore, I'm keeping ITC in my stock list. Now, before you drop off, because I've covered three stocks, please listen to my fourth point that how am I going to buy these stocks? Market will stay sideways and will generally go up. I do not see a major correction coming. It might fall by 15%, right? There is no guarantee, but it will come up again. So in that sense, if I take a five to 10 year window, the chances of Nifty going from 16,000 to 20,000 is much higher than Nifty coming from 15,000 to 12,000, right? So I'm generally bullish in this market. Therefore, I'm investing in growth industries like steel commodities, small finance bank, finance companies, HDFC, AMC type of firms, because I feel that the market is going to go up. These are my aggressive stocks. That's one. I also have a few defensive stocks like ITC in my portfolio. This is called as portfolio designing. I made another separate video on this topic that how to diversify. Please watch that. That will help you understand and design your own portfolio. But final word of advice here is that please do not put all your money in these three stocks tomorrow. Just because I'm saying it, please buy at dips whenever the stock prices are trading around their 200 DMA. Stocks like Tata Steel, I don't think that they will trade at their 200 DMA because there is a massive cycle going on. So it's okay to buy at that non 200 DMA. But for other two stocks, if you are investing in it, try to invest at around that 200 DMA, small, small amounts, right? Try to make investments over the next five to six months. Do not put all your money in one go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your feedback. I would love to hear from you.